Welcome to More Than Renovating, a renovate and real estate podcast. Our founder, Belinda Smith, talks to industry experts to provide you with the knowledge and information you need to make renovating for love and profit your reality. Belinda will also chat to some of her Renovation Mastery members who are just everyday people doing extraordinary things, following their passions in the renovation and property space. So let's jump straight into the episode. Enjoy. Hi everyone, as you know, I'm Belinda Smith from Renovate and Real Estate and this episode of our wonderful podcast, More Than Renovating, is featuring Anne-Marie and Stuart Rayner. They are in business called Dreamscape Renovations and you can find them at dreamrenos.com.au, dreamrenos with an S, dreamrenos.com.au and today we're just going to kind of look behind the behind the curtain of this couple and find out a little bit about where they started with their renovating and you know how they've ended up at a position or in a place where they've renovated many homes now and they have the level of experience that they do welcome Stuart and Anne-Marie thanks very much hello Hello. right where did it all begin for you actually I'm going to split you up for this little part Anne-Marie in your childhood was there anything that you know, that was in front of you that led you down the path of renovating or having an understanding of building and construction? Funny you should say that because when we moved from, when my mum remarried, my stepfather and her ended up selling a place in Londonderry and they bought a house in Carlton, which took years and years and years to renovate they just did bit by bit by bit by bit so yeah I remember sleeping on a mattress on the floor boiling water in one of those old garbage bin steel drums so you know and carrying buckets of mortar and cement and all that sort of stuff from from like 11 years old so yeah looking back on it I guess a kind of yeah it was a good path you know the path was set way back then Yes, um, so yeah. you, you grew up seeing it all yeah. unfolding. And so where did you go to high school and when and where did you meet Stuart? So I went to high school at Blakehurst, Blakehurst High, um, and then I met Stuart at uni in the bar. So <laughs> I blame alcohol for that. But obviously it's been not a bad choice because we're still here. Well, that's all right. I started to date Brett when I spoke to him in a bar. I knew him through school, but it was definitely the night in the bar the yeah. man. <laughs> and that ended up with us going out on our first date. Fantastic. Stuart, what about you? Where did you grow up and was renovation part of your childhood? Yeah. So I grew up in Lithgow in the Blue Mountains. You could almost say renovation was part of growing up, but <laughs> it was living in a house that was almost unrenovated. Like, partially renovated for almost the whole time I was there. So as a child, very young, Dad decided that he would convert the current smallish kitchen and bathroom and extend the back. And so we had a really big kitchen and then a new bathroom at the back so we didn't have to use an outdoor toilet anymore, which is great in Lithgow. Especially in Lithgow in the middle of winter. Can't do yep. it colder than that. Yep, so I had that until I was about eight or nine, I think. But, yeah, but Dad never finished. So so the bathroom was usable and the shower and all that stuff was all good, but, you know, the concrete out to it all was never tiled. There was no splashback. There was no splashback. I think the mirror broke as he put it in in the bathroom, so it was still broken when we took it out. Well, that's why he never finished. 35 years after. Yeah, because an unbroken, what is it, a broken mirror is bad luck. That's why I didn't get to finish the (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to fix the mirror first. Then my mum just brought him a, a physical round to it. Yeah. That's a circle which was written and it says, when I get around to it, I'm going to finish everything I said. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. still didn't work. No. So, oh, honestly, so many people have things where they start them and never finish them. So that's what you both experienced. Mm. My, my mum and dad were the opposite in that mum was just a finisher. Even now she just is to the extent where you just think, relax, mum, leave it for a week, but she can't. So it that's a personality thing. And also life is busy and having kids mm. is busy. So you can understand yeah. it. Now that you're renovated, you can understand how some people put things aside. But I know you guys finish things yeah. very, very well. 
All right. So what are your base qualifications? At, at uni, what were you doing, Anne-Marie, and what was Stuart, what did you do? Um, well, I started off doing an electrical engineering degree and I did that for two years. Then I met him and then he told me to switch to computing science. So I ended up swapping over and doing a Bachelor of Computing Science. So, Is that so you guys could be together for each lecture? Um, well, that didn't work if it was because yeah. we were in different years. Yeah, <laughs> I think last year he ended up having one class or something together, but that was about it, yeah, because I was a year behind. So, mm. And what about the first home you guys landed in together? Where well, we... Rental or purchase? Well, both, both. What was your journey as a couple? Well, uh, when we got married, we were renting in Roselands, in Roselands one of those, you know, old 60s style, 60s style brick. And that did have an outdoor toilet, so <laughs> we got an outdoor toilet again. But we ended up doing little bits like in the garden out there and we got some old lino, I think, from my mum's place and we laid that through the kitchen. And, mm. yeah, so that was the very first one and then... We ended up buying a block of land in Wattle Grove out towards Liverpool. They were building the new estate out there. So that was our first experience in a project home build. Hmm. Yeah. That's, so that was fun. And yeah. that's where you lived for we how long? lived for four years. Yeah, four or five years. Yeah. yeah, there. And then we bought another home just in a neighbouring suburb because by then we had one child and another one on the way and we just wanted a bigger backyard. The block that we had in Wattle Grove was 450 square metres, so there wasn't a lot of yeah, space I... for kids to run around in. Hmm. So we ended up buying a 987 square metre block just sort of literally across Heathcote Road in a neighbouring suburb and we lived there for about 25 years. Yeah, we did do another build. We did knock down rebuild on that one after. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that was a knock down rebuild again with another display yeah. home or project home yeah. company. Yeah. yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And at what point during that time did you start to do some investing other than the place that you were living in? So about two thousand and one, we bought our first investment property. Oh. Oh, so did I, same time. Yeah. 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 So that was one was up in Queensland. Yeah. And then bought a couple more. Yeah. Over time, as its finances improved a little bit, yeah, we were able to leverage our equity and buy another property and then, you know, our super and buy another property and sell a couple that weren't doing well, trying to build up, you know, that nest egg yeah. for retirement. <laughs> Yeah, which continues, right? I think it's a continual yeah. journey. I love the way that you said that you sold the ones that weren't doing very, very well. I hear the mm -hmm. statement sometimes, never, never sell. Your thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. You should sell. I mean, there's you could sit on something for way too long. Yeah. And if you have, look, at eventually it probably will come good. But if you just sold it, yes, and take the loss. But you could have doubled the growth by buying the right thing instead. Yeah, I agree. Even if it's not so much a loss, but it's just such a slow burn that you have to wait yeah. forever and ever and ever for something great yeah. to happen. I agree. The opportunity loss by sitting on a dud for way too long mm. is, you know, it bites. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. with you. Yeah, you're just feeding the bank rather than your own portfolio. So, you know, nah, see you later. <laughs> And what do you think that renovating and working as a renovator, do you think it's made an impact on your kids and where they are in their worlds? What do they think about it all? Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think anything, actually. I hope that they get some knowledge from it. I think they do. I don't think they necessarily would do it. But, you know, when we talk to them about it, they seem interested. <laughs> <laughs> they might be more um, interested in getting you guys to go and do the work. Yeah, possibly for them. Yeah, yeah. possibly. Our youngest does do some work with us. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so our youngest does, and our eldest, he's more into the projects rewards rather than yeah, so he's actually hands on. So he's helped fund a couple of our projects. Yeah. So he likes that part of it. He says, "Oh yeah, I've got a few few dollars. Here you go." <laughs> And, and, and then, then we give him that plus a little plus, bit. Plus so a little something, something extra. 
Yeah. Yeah. So he's interested in that part of it. I, th- I think he's more on the business end of it, whereas our youngest is more on the, the handyman type yeah. side of it. What is it about building an investment portfolio and renovating that excites you the most? Go on, you creative girl. <laughs> <laughs> you create. What did you say? You creative girl. Yeah. Well, that's her. she does all the design and all the yeah. creative because that's. That's what she's really good at. It's her outlet, I think. It's one of yeah. the one for her. Yeah, I do enjoy that. I, I like sitting there and trying to work out and picking all the, the items and the tiles and the paints. But I think we got into it because we, I guess, wanted to be our own bosses but also be able to create something and see the enjoyment from someone else when they buy it or walk through it and... Hmm. Rather than, you know, just something being demolished or or just, you know, a bit of like a cosmetic lick and then, then rent it out and, you know, poor tenants are living in, in houses that re- they really shouldn't be living in. Yeah. So plus being able to create a portfolio that we can then use to our benefit so be able to live the life that we want to live. Yeah. So the win-win is you're creating wealth for, for you guys, for you and the family, yeah. Yeah. creating a portfolio, but you're also providing people with a home that they can be proud of, that they can mm. move straight into and, mm. and yeah. settle and bring up their family. Yeah, yeah. So. for sure. And and certainly gives us a great deal of joy. I mean, it's, it's so her creatively and I, I just get a whole lot of joy out of just making things. So yeah. to be able yeah. to bring her vision into the reality is fantastic. So tell me a little bit about how you do work together as a team because I know you make a really, really good team. So who does what? Where does it start? Who does the property research? We both of us, to be honest. So, yeah, we've, we've got a process that we've built over time to evaluate suburbs and then to be able to look at be able to look at a house in a suburb and go, so we need to pick it up for X because we know we can sell it for Y. So we always work backwards on that. So I guess any of that... So the, the technicalities of that is probably in my domain, but we both do all of that sub of analysis and look at houses and we're both crawling through, you know, real estate or domain or whatever. Yeah, and using your network and talking to people and being mm. in connection with all of the right real estate agents on the ground to get deals if you can off market, all of those things. I know you work, actually sure. work hard at this. And when I say hard at this, you're consistent. You're consistently applying effort for the course mm, we try to <laughs> we do yeah. try to and, and yeah i think you're right that the relationship with some people is really really important and we've only been up in this area now for 12 months 12, well, wow. officially 12 months we actually moved in a year ago exactly today <laughs> but we've sort of been around the area for another year before that mm. uh, but we've got really strong relationships with a number of agents now who well one who just brought us our last deal which we've just about to settle on next week Yes. And the last one before that, she worked really hard to find us a deal. And then we've got a process where we try to encourage them by saying, you find us a deal, we will give you first offer to sell it again for us. So you get double commission. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is enticing for a real estate agent. And they also love it when you know what you're talking about. So you know when they bring you a deal, whether it's a good offer or it's not, or it's a good deal to look at or it's mm-hmm. one that you walk on past and you know your prices. So yes. you know, taking that decisive action makes a lot of difference with the real estate agents and how they are prepared to deal, deal with you. Are there any mm-hmm. specialist skills or DIY talents that you both have? Stuart, what are your DIY talents? I'm going to put everything. I'm just going to say everything. No, 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 I don't know. Everything, not everything. Uh, <laughs> Emery yeah. goes, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. It's most things. <laughs> Look, yeah. so for me, I guess the area I work the best, I think, is in anything to do with timber and, mm-hmm. and stuff. So cabinetry, flooring, you know, building decks, all of that stuff I find, you know, relatively enjoyable. So it's, that means I'm getting to it, it's stuck in. Yeah. I'm getting a lot better at laying floors. Yeah. <laughs> getting better at tiling. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, paintings, well, painting's just painting. <laughs> yeah, painting's just painting. When you say laying floors, do you have a go at tiling floors? When you say, or you I mean, just, I, you I, mean I, yeah, I, I don't tend to tile wet area floors because yeah. I, I don't like to have that the pull between who did the waterproofing and who did tiles. 
And if someone stuffed it up, who did it? So we've got a tradesman who does both. And so if there's a problem, it's his. Yeah, great idea. Yeah. But you know, I do splashbacks. I can do like scale fresco areas or or you know, skirting tiles or all that sort of stuff is fine. Yeah, mm. plank floors. Yeah. Do you do those so like vinyl planks or hybrid or engineered yeah. timber? Do you lay those? Then lots and lots and lots of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Fantastic, Emery. Do you just point the finger and supervise and boss him around, or do you do? He probably wishes I did that. But... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I do the initial design, so I mock up, you know, the kitchens and we work out those, that design and bathrooms, colour schemes, tiles, and then I go and shopping and try and get all our items at a good price and negotiate and, yeah, all that stuff. But I do get on the tools as well and I paint and I grout. So if he tiles, I'll generally do the grouting and siliconing and, you know, but I've been known to get onto the sledgehammer and pull up tiles and do a bit of demolition as well. So yeah. like in the early days, you do everything. <laughs> oh, I, I agree. Well, the early days, in the early days, if you guys are like Brett and I, we didn't have the funds just to pay no. to do a lot of stuff. So we had mm. to figure things out and just get in there and have a go. Yeah. Uh, so you yeah. Lots of YouTube that. videos and. Yeah. And, and the problem with that now is that, you know, because we like to have a product that's going to look and be very good, mm. we get very fussy. And there's so many, it's hard to find tradies who fit, come up to the level of quality that you want. Or can actually produce yourself sometimes. So oh, yeah. I, I agree, you know, when you know yeah. how what a high standard you can work to and a high quality, even mm. though um, many of us DIYers are a little bit slower, we are careful mm. and we've got an emotional attachment to the job going well and looking great. Mm. Yeah, we'll, we'll slow it down, take our time and get a really nice result. Now we go fast. Yeah, <laughs> that being said, you guys have got multiple projects coming up, so you'll be less on the tools perhaps and getting people to do a little bit more? Yeah. That's, that's the plan? That's, that's the plan. plan. That's, that's the plan. plan. So, so. But, it, but it is still our creative outlet, so we'll yeah. pick our project where we're more yeah. and then most of the other ones will be a lot less. Mm. So yeah, you can't spread yourself too thin. And if you want to scale, which is where we're at. Yes. Yeah. You can only there's only one of you, so you can't scale yourself. Mm. Yeah, that is true. Mm. Has renovation and doing what you do changed your thinking at all? Like let's just say about relying on a day job. Well, given that we've both got no day jobs now, <laughs> it must have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I quit my day job in March this year. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was part of a, a ten year plan that we put in place. Um, so we finally managed to tick that box, and uh, we saved up enough money so that we were comfortable to be able to do that and live on the lumpy income that uh, renovation brings. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. So Anna given hers up three, two years ago, two and a half. Yeah, something like that, two and a half, three years ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah fantastic. So, so think- yeah, I think another real change is that it just changes your mindset or if you, well, to be good at it, I think, your mindset's got to change to an abundance mindset. Yeah. You know, it's really, it's all out there, you just got to find it. Oh, I love that. And, and whether and that's I- deals or whether that's, you know, money to help you do it or whether it's tradesmen to help you finish it, whatever it is, it, you know, it'll come. Yeah, I'm with you. That's really nice that you say that out loud. Some people think it, other people don't believe it at all. So it's really nice to hear that, Stuart. It's so true. I think when you Mm -hmm. make your little action steps towards something and you really want something to happen bad enough and you're on the lookout and you're on the prowl and at the same time, you you know, that that action and that will, things land in front of you and you think, how did that happen? Like, Mm -hmm. how did I find that person? Oh, wow, that was exactly what I was looking for and they can label it like, I mean, it's such a loose term, the law of attraction, but really it does mm. play a big part in... It, it does, but it is, you know, keep turning up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you yeah. keep turning up or the abundance keeps turning up or both? Well, you keep turning up and the abundance and else will follow. Yeah. 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 And I think we look at the income that we earn per year, like many people earn 80 or 90 or 100 or whatever that income actually is. If you look at that number... And then you look at renovating and the profit from renovating, it's not that difficult to see how renovating can replace that number with yeah, a project. 
and a good yeah. home and, and then some. So it's yeah. just about that, taking the leap of faith, which you guys have already done. Yeah, especially when it gives you so much more freedom in your own time mm. to, and still earn that money. You guys. Between projects, you've got free time. Yeah, you do. I mean, you're bu- you're busy when when you're on your own, but when you when you've got mm. your free time, you do have your free time. It is definitely yeah. a lifestyle business. So right now, tell me a little bit about Dreamscape Renaults and exactly your business model and what you're doing right now with and for clients and JV partners. Cool. No, you sir. <laughs> Don't talk too much. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, you do it. <laughs> So we have set up Dreamscape uh, Renos to basically be a design consultancy court sort of service for people in our area. So our area being Central Coast, Lake Macquarie, you know, even into the Hunter Valley. Um, So for people who have an idea that they want to do some renovations, they might have some ideas of what they want to do, but they really need someone to help them clarify those visions, work out what really can and can't be done. Um, We offer a service where we can even manage that renovation for them if they'd like. But if they want just the design, we can do that as a a brief and hand it over, sit down with a builder once they find one or help them find a builder Mm -hmm. and make sure that that handover and the builder understands what the vision is and what needs to be done. So the qualities that you bring to a business like that is, well, I'll say the ones, I'll say some and you can fill in the gaps. You know your properties very, very well. So you know when someone is likely to overcapitalize and you can save them from making costly mistakes. You have some or you have a network in your local area so you're not fossicking around trialing, you know, tradies Mm -hmm. that, that may or may not be hopeless. So you're taking all of the angst around, you know, selecting tradies and finding people to support others in renovating you know what colors work together you know what tiles work you know where to find product for less how to create a look that sells or is worth more or is just a beautiful home for people to live in you know how to create that look and you do have some amazing qualities in design Stuart and Marie and when you can show somebody if you can do a mock-up of a kitchen or a laundry renovation I know you did a really beautiful Mm -hmm. client job on a laundry for someone um, but you know when you could show people what it's likely to look like and then the end product looks like that it's very very helpful for people and if they're really really busy and they just can't get their head around everything to do with renovating you take all of that angst away as well because you just kind of step in and make it all happen yeah well that's that's definitely the plan pretty much in a nutshell yes um yeah. but yeah i think it's yeah it's really important but Mind you, saying that, some, it really depends what the homeowner wants. Yeah. If they're looking to do it up to sell, then all that's true. But there's plenty of times when someone wants to do it up to live in. And sometimes those decisions don't make sense in terms of, you know, that's overcapitalizing because if you're going to live in it for another 10 or 15 years, who cares? And someone loves it. If you're enjoying it, then yeah. that's, that's what it's about. Yeah, yeah agree. Yeah. And working with clients is pretty good fun. So clients all come with their own personalities okay. and their their likes and and their dislikes and it's, it's it's very very joyous when you're working with people outside just doing stuff for yourself and a lot of people who end up in a business like Dreamscape Renovations have started with just renovating one or two homes for themselves and then go okay I've got all this to share all of this knowledge mm-hmm. So let's talk about the knowledge that you've developed over the years. You have done property education now since when did you start your first property education course? 2018, yeah, 17, 18, yeah. Yeah. And you have just gone from different mentors and different courses and different levels of training because there are so many aspects to renovating. Well, we'll call it renovating for profit, but it's just renovating and that might mean for somebody who stays in a home. For sure, yeah. And will you continue to do that? For the foreseeable future, and with even with our sort of what's the balance of our five-year plan, I mean, we've always said so. If we get to that point where we can retire, so we're financially free and we can do what we like, we're still likely to do mm-hmm. some renovations because we enjoy it so much. 
I'm the same. I, I'm glad yeah. to see that too. I'm like, what is retirement where you're doing absolutely nothing? I'll go crazy. Oh, no, that, that's not retirement. No. Retirement is being able to do what you want. When you want. When, yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And, yeah. For the, and for the income you need to live comfortably mm. without worry. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. So. All right. So, Holmes, Tukli, Gwendolyn. Is that how you say it? Gwendolyn? Yeah, yeah Gwendolyn. Mount Pritchard, Glenfield, Bangor, Queen Bien. Client projects, you guys have done a lot. What's yep. your favourite project been? Hard to pick. I love, I love them all. I'm going to live in all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think I liked Bangor because that was that was the first sort of big reno where, you know, everything was quite new. I wasn't quite sure of, you know, will these tiles work? Will that floor work? And to see it all come together so well, mm. I think, yeah, I love that about it. It was certainly a big learning curve for both of us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's... But, a... but I was going to say, but it sort of reinforced that, reinforced the fact that we can do this. You know, yeah. we, we do have the skills and... You know, look what we can produce. And so, yeah, I think that's, I want to yeah. say that's my favourite because it just reinforced everything and yeah. and the path that we wanted to go on. It just went, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. it all feels good. It all works. And, yes, we could do it and we and could yes, yeah. do this again quite successfully. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was your big, leap, your big leap into it. Yeah. It was. And it, well, it wasn't just for us, though. The homeowner as well was a big leap because that was a, a JV with the homeowner. Yeah. So it was a you know, quite a leap of faith and, and a scary thing for us to go, yes, you're putting your trust in us. Yeah. And, I mean, she left. She had no – she didn't pick anything. She just left it all to me and went, I trust you. And it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> Which is awesome, but that's a little bit terrifying at the same time. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. Whereas I think um, the Mount Pritchard one was probably my favourite. It was a very challenging house to fix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was ex-Department um, of Housing. And, yeah, so we learned yeah. all about horsehair, gibrock and oh, plaster. Yeah. And, and it was water yeah. damage and the cornices were the older style cornices, so we had to find someone that could and actually kind of repair. repair it because, you know, or the rest of it was beautiful. It was just that one little wall where it, the water just damaged it. But yeah, just yeah, making yeah learning it. how to repair sash windows and yeah, yeah, fixing and repairing a whole chunk of the you know, weatherboard. And we had to get custom cut yeah. weatherboard to replace bits and pieces. And because yeah, the profile wasn't available anymore. So <laughs> you know, researching that and trying to find a timber yard that would actually be able to reproduce it yeah yeah you're summing up renovating in in a few sentences in that it is just solving each little little problem, problem each little issue yeah. that can come along yeah. without getting too freaked out about what to do there's always a solution and you can always find a way to get things done mm. yeah yeah and yeah. so out of all of those projects did they all work well for you profit wise all except for Gwendolyn. Mm. Okay. So, Gwendolyn, um, so I guess that was our first big project up here on the Central Coast. Yeah. And I know you say we've now got a, a list of trades and whatever else that we know and trust. At that point, we didn't. And yes. I guess that was really the stumbling block. So the quality of some of the finishes meant we had to redo some stuff. And the time frame for a couple of them was... They'd much rather work on their time than our time frame. So <laughs> it, it just dragged on way too long. And so it just cut into our, our yeah. profits. Yeah, yeah, so we just, yeah, yeah. It ate it all up. But, but you know. we've now got, from that, we did get quite a few mm -hmm. trades that we now continue to use. So, yeah. yeah. But, and, you know, onwards and upwards. We don't, yeah. we don't care if we move on. No, yeah. you know, you, you, you do. You learn, you gather your team, you get some experience. And you just dust yourself off and continue on. And, yeah. you know, market can perform a little bit differently here yeah. as well, can affect the outcome. Yeah. yeah, and the weather wasn't great that year. It was just rain after rain after rain. So that delayed things as well. And, yeah, so. There you go. We only case, yeah, it was just a case of lots of little things that just 
ate away at the profit, <laughs> at the profit and made it a more difficult project to run. Yes, yeah, yeah. and because we were still in Sydney and driving up back and forth, back and forth, so, yeah. yeah. So out of that, what do you think is the key learning from that experience? The biggest learning we are from that, I think, is that we take far more direct control. Yeah. So whether it's even if it's just going, you know, making sure the trades turn up as opposed to doing it yourself, but be far more direct and, you know, I wouldn't say aggressive, but certainly being on top of everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, and, and don't be afraid to swap a trade out if you have to. Yeah, or or pull someone up in a in a you know like in yeah. a nice well, kind of way so you don't get way. too cranky. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, some things just have to be redone or have to be addressed before they go on because once they go mm. on to the next thing and the next thing, yeah, it's pretty hard to unwind things sometimes. So if you see yeah. something and you catch it early, early in the piece, you're much better off. For sure. Yeah. So what are your plans for from now and beyond? Like where do you think all of this is going to take you now you've launched your own business as renovation consultants? Go on, where are we going? To the moon, Alice? <laughs> on, a, on a really long holiday. <laughs> yeah. no, but we we want we, we still want to do some projects for ourselves but we also want to expand um, into the consultancy space so hoping to get a few more consulting clients where we can help them achieve their dreams and their goals and uh, yeah just build get closer to that lifestyle that we want a few Hmm. more projects and less hands-on yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. With the yeah. long term goal being, we move house, and we never move house again after that one. Yeah. yeah, well, that's an important point too. There are so many renovators who flip homes by moving every year or so, and mm. you know, renovating, move, renovating, move, and there's mm. there's a big workload in that. So when you get yeah. settled in something you really like, mm. um, I absolutely encourage people to stay and put their feet up a little bit in between renos. Yeah, yeah. and we, we we tend to not renovate the house we're in if we can avoid it. Yeah. So, because it's just so hard and long, yeah. we'd rather get in, renovate it, flip it, move on. Yeah, yeah. So we like to be done in, you know, three months maximum. Yeah, that's a great turnaround. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a great one. Right. Yeah. We get back to our records. Yeah. Twenty-one days. Twenty-one days. Yeah. Uh, twenty-one um, days. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, the house that we're living in now, we're going to renovate, but that's because we had to live somewhere when we left Sydney. So we haven't found our forever home yet, but that's the goal as well, that mm. it's with renovating and, you know, and living in the area, we get to find out which streets we like, which ones we don't, and yeah. then be able to get ourselves in, in, a, in a financial position where if we do see the house that, we absolutely fall in love or we can just go yep i'll have that thanks and you guys are also in the position to grab that house if it's less than perfect really yes are. oh for sure yeah. Yeah. I, I would find yeah. it really hard to buy something that people consider already done because i would move in there and go oh i don't kind of like that so i'll yeah. change that so you yeah. might as well change more and have, and have it exactly as you want yeah yeah, yeah. And, well done and, guys and, yeah and that's the beauty of doing what we do is we're not afraid to do that yeah, it's an absolute pleasure having you guys inside my Renovation Mastery and Renovation Consultancy Mastery community. You set a cracking example. You are doers, not just talkers, and are prepared to face things. Even that Gwendolyn project you said wasn't your favourite, just to mm. kind of move through it and keep going. Yeah. Um, the prize is big and the prize is worth it. Uh, the goals are definitely worth pursuing. So thank you so much for joining me today and if anybody would like to reach out directly to Stuart or to Anne-Marie you can find them at dreamrenos.com.au dreamrenos.com.au you'll also find them on Facebook and Instagram you'll see some of their previous projects so go and have a look at their website and have a look at their work you'll see what great renovators they are thanks so much Uh, thank you thank you thank you so I say that Without the community behind you, it becomes really hard. But the community is really great to have around here. And obviously your support as well. Oh, thank you. I usually ask the question and I'm like, oh, people are probably sick of me asking that same question, but I like I, I know what I've got going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, I'm the quite community, proud. 
the community is a, a massive amazing. thing and an amazing group. Yeah. Oh, but definitely. You know, but you know what you put in. Yeah. If you want to sit back and just watch, you're not going to get much out. I agree. Those days where things aren't going so well on site, I think the community is everything during those yeah. moments. Definitely. definitely. Yeah. 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 Cool. Awesome, guys. Thank Good. you. Thank you Thanks, so much. Thanks, Melinda. See ya.